Hello, hello, beloved. We are together. I'm so blessed of testimonies from some of you that are watching this. And you're blessed. It's the Holy Spirit that brings from inside of you this life, this revelation, this truth. He placed it in there. It's been there for a while. But somehow, through these words, through this communication, the Holy Spirit is bringing them so you are becoming conscious of them. They are alive. They become active inside you, with you. We are talking about parables, and I uh, mentioned this a few times. All these parables, they prove the kingdom of God. It's a relationship. It's not just the seed. It's also the man that plants the seed. It's the process of the seed growing. It's, uh, it's not just a treasure. It's someone seeking and finding that treasure and the relationship with that field that has the treasure. He sells everything. See, if hearing about the Lord and about the Gospel is not challenging and changing everything inside you then I wonder did you find the treasure did you hear the full gospel of Jesus Christ if it's not absolutely touching every part of the dough like the yeast East is touching every part. If it's not changing, touching and influencing, challenging every part of you, then I'm wondering, did you get to interact with the living kingdom of God, with the Lord Jesus? It says in Matthew 6, 6, first, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. It's a relationship. It's you finding Him as your King. Father, you are my King. And Him finding you as His righteousness. And he looks at you, my son, you are my righteousness. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Because his righteousness, it's you. When you find him and he is the treasure you've been looking for, you discover who you are. Do you see that relationship? I think this is one of the most profound messages that we understand from the parables of the kingdom. Beautiful, living words. Praise you, Father. So today we, we are exploring, we're reading, we're receiving another revelation it's the pearl of great price let's read in Matthew 13 45 again the kingdom of heaven it's like a traveling merchant buyer seeking beautiful pearls and having found one pearl of great value Having gone off, sold all, <laughs> as much as he was possessing, having staked 
all that he had in one business venture, which would either make or break him. I like this paraphrasing, right? And purchased it in the marketplace. And what if the price was too high? I'm not going to keep everything, anything. I'm not going to keep anything behind. Well, they, they want to sell you that, that stuff, that Jesus stuff, that revelation, that sonship. That's, yeah, it's kind of, um, it looks like, sounds like too much, too, um, you know, too fluffy and all these things. Oh, yeah. They want your money. They want um, things that you have. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. If you did find that pearl, then it didn't matter. He didn't have anything else to live for. That was the business venture of his life. He put everything in it. Everything. Do you see that? What I like, and it's different, lots of these uh, parables, they bring different aspects of this relationship with the kingdom of God. He is an experienced merchant. This is not someone that, um, you know, finds a treasure we don't even know it just kind of ran into it and we don't know how he found it but this person was a diligent seeker of pearls he was after something was telling him that one day you'll find something like this so it's very important that, yes, the kingdom of God is like a merchant seeking pearls. See, it's this relationship. The kingdom of God is not just a place where now we're going to cast the demons, we're going to dethrone the evil and the unjust and just to reign, and this is a kingdom. That's not what you see here. The kingdom of God is a relationship with beauty. The kingdom of God, it's costing you everything. It's not kind of a utopic, oh yes, it's going to be, now we're going to be strong and we'll decide what to do and... Um, we'll do this, we'll go for this. This is not what it describes here. We're talking the kingdom of God. Another interesting thing, the same as the one with the treasure, the pearl, it's not alive like the seeds. See, the, the seeds... Even the, um, even the yeast, they are some living organism, right? They have some biological life in there. The pearl doesn't, and the treasure didn't. Isn't it interesting? I mean, I, I know we, we have a whole ministry of the word of faith that keeps talking about seeds, 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 seeds. And it's it's true. It's the law of sowing and reaping. It's something that God placed in this earth to work. But for some reason, the word of God is going beyond that with these parables, we're still talking about the kingdom of God. I mean, how many of you know that if you if you uh, plant plant uh, a pearl, it's not going to grow pearls? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? 
and I'm sure you do. But what it means here and what it tries to bring us more closer to is this relationship. It's the, the desire of finding that, persuading persistency, the persistency to look for that, and finally giving it all to find that. So maybe indirectly it's not the it's not the death of the seed. I mean the seed had to die. Right? The seed dies in the form that it is to bring a new body, to bring something new. So in a different form there is a death even in this by selling everything you have. It's, it's a death to the past. It's a death to the status. It's a death to everything that you think you had. In this case, it's not the seed that dies, but is the finder of the pearl that basically dies. To the old life. He doesn't care about everything that he achieved, everything that he had. He sells absolutely everything for one thing. It comes to mind Philippians 3, 7 and 8 when the Apostle is talking whatever things were to me a gainful asset these things i have considered a loss when it comes to my acquisition of christ what was that very precious pearl for apostle paul christ christ and that's for you too and still, so consider them as a loss, continues the Apostle. Yes, indeed, therefore, at least, even I am still setting all things down to be a loss for the sake of that which excels all others. My relationship, my knowledge, my knowing of Christ Jesus my Lord, which I have gained through experience, for those for whose sake I have been caused to forfeit all things, and I'm still counting them as a dung, in order that Christ I might gain. It's the beginning. Is the attitude of the beginning. Is the Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. And I live no more. This life, it's Christ's life right now. Nothing. It's worth saving from the old life because you found something so much more precious. Therefore, everything else can go. Listen to this. We do not kill everything dead, dead, dead. That's dead. We don't kill everything in our lives because, well, I have to be crucified. I don't have the right for that. I don't have the right for this. I cannot do this. I don't have to do this. Now I'm crucified. Now this is, uh, you know, a, a monk in a monastery type of thing. This is a forced death and it's called legalism. Now, you know why we 
forfeit all things and he considers them as dung, that we don't care about them, they smell bad. You know why? Because we are smelling the aroma of Christ. And when you take in, inhale Him, Every other smell is dung. <laughs> it's yuck. Right? Everything else pales in comparison with Him. This is what I want you to get. Some people keep paying the price and doing this and doing that. Because one day they'll find the pearl. That's not what it says here. Because he found the treasure. Because he found that most precious pearl. Yes, I was looking for it. With all the resources I had, I was looking. But when I found it, nothing else was worth keeping it. This is the relationship that makes um, Galatians 2.20 as, um, as a joy. It's not like, oh no, I have to put that. Oh no, that's another cross thing. What is this? Oh, that has to die. Oh, I cannot do that. I cannot do this. I cannot do this. That's not it. Only when you found that super precious pearl you can look and in comparison with that you will know you will feel that you hate everything else because it's it cannot compare with him did you find a very special great prize pearl I'm sure you do because you keep listening to this, you, you found this and your heart is so full of joy <laughs> when you hear some other person that found that precious pearl. Yeah, I, I guess we're, we're a bunch of people <laughs> that totally found him. Or we're found by him, that's for sure. Love you.